Welcome, welcome. New video and I've got a good one for you today. I'm going to share with you top my top 10 epoxy disasters. Most of these things have happened to me or if not to me, they happened to someone I was very closely related with. So maybe it was a customer of mine or someone I was working with. Uh, let's go right in. Uh, here's like a little warm up. Two pictures of failed floors. I'll tell you more about these and others right now. So number one, number one top 10. Um, please note, these are in no apparent order. I'm just listing 10 disasters. The trapped debris floor. Now, what this is, is right here. What happens if you forget to sweep the floor before coating? All the little dust particles get trapped, and this is how it looks like. Uh, it should be a beautiful floor, but it's got all these little particles trapped in the floor, and you've got debris trapped. Customer wasn't happy about this one. Always vacuum the floor and shake the dust from the walls before you do the final coat. So make sure you shake off the dust, you maybe use a blower, then vacuum the floor. Make sure the floor is squeaky clean. You may even want to apply a coat of solvent just to collect any micro dust. And here's a guy vacuuming the floor before we coat it. Number two, the wrinkling epoxy paint. Now this actually didn't happen to me on a floor. It happened to in, an epo in a pool painted with epoxy. But this is a very interesting picture. And this is what we call the wrinkling epoxy paint. Now what happened here is I had a painter who thought it would be a clever idea to uh, coat the second coat of epoxy while the, still, the first coat was still drying. So what happens there, you get wrinkling epoxy. And the reason is there's still some solvent trapped in the previous coating, in the first coating. And then you start applying a new coating on top. So the new coating is drying, but the solvent hasn't managed to evaporate. And this is what you get. The solvent is trapped and the epoxy wrinkles. So never apply wet on wet epoxy. Do your first coat, do the primer, wait till it dries, do the next coat. Wait till it dries, do your next coat. Do not apply on a wet, on a wet floor or on a wet wall. Uh, this is a no-no for epoxy. Otherwise, you will get the previous picture wrinkling epoxy and as I say here the epoxy might dry before the solvent can get out very 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 important that you let the floor dry properly according to the instructions by the manufacturer number three disaster I call the crappy concrete disaster this is what happens when you decide to apply epoxy on really bad quality concrete you you probably think hey come on it's just concrete epoxy is such a good product it, it will be fine but no, it's not. And here are two examples um, where we applied a very thick layer of epoxy on really bad concrete and it lasted for a few months and then it, the whole thing just started crap, uh, cracking. It was really bad. And here to show you exactly what happened was um, basically when the epoxy breaks, you've basically got, got a top layer of epoxy, like a top layer of concrete that just kind of stuck to the epoxy and came off. So the concrete was such bad quality that it was really weak. It was too weak for the epoxy. So uh, very important to reconsider when you are applying on concrete. Um, if the concrete is bad quality, epoxy on top won't necessarily fix it um, because you've still got to deal with a really bad uh, quality concrete underneath. So just so because you've got a great product, it doesn't mean that you're going to solve your problem. Number four, this is a little silly one. Um, we once wanted to seal some joints and we did not use a sealant that was paintable. Guess what happened then? This is what happened. So what we see here is the line in the middle or right by the air, that's the joint. So we filled that joint up, but instead of using like a normal joint sealant, we used a, um, a silicone, like a windows glazing sealant that's not paintable. So then we applied the primer on top and this is what we got. So right where this, the joint is, it hasn't really been painted over properly. And you can see it better in this picture. So the joint is right down the middle and you can see to the left and the right, the area where the sealant was covered, we didn't get good, the, the primer didn't up, settle properly on the joint. So we basically had to clean that up and re, re, uh, Recode it to make sure that you wouldn't have a problem later on because if the primer can't stick to the sealant Then you can be pretty sure the paint won't stick to the sealant. So very important always use paintable sealants And in case you're wondering this is the end result of the project. It looks pretty cool So we managed to fix the joint problem and we had a pretty good result in the end 
Number five, the roller marks. Now, this is one of my pet peeves. I don't know, I've had some problems lately with roller marks. Um, we haven't been doing a very good job with applying the floor properly. Um, and here are two examples of uh, projects that were completed and a few months later the, the customer said, hey, I'm getting these weird lines and weird roller marks on my floor. What's wrong? And basically what happened was because the epoxy hadn't been applied properly and spread out properly, um, then the, as the floor picked up dirt, it picked up dirt where the roller marks were and they became very visible. These are two examples here. And you can watch the video on back rolling. We can click on the link and watch this video on back rolling to learn more about how to avoid roller marks if you're ever getting them. Now, number six, I call it the pizza leaflet disaster, also known as the paw marks disaster, also known as the fly sticking to the epoxy disaster. Basically, I wish I had a picture for this, but basically, this is what happens when after you finish the project someone goes and does something something goes and sticks to the epoxy um, I once had a dog run onto the floor and the poor dog had epoxy stuck to its paws this is not from the actual project this is just a picture of the internet because it didn't actually have a picture of the paw marks but very very important seal and block all access to doors and windows uh, I've had flies and the pizza leaflet I was referring to as we completed a, a project and it was one of those projects where you go out into the street and a pizza delivery guy threw a flyer underneath the door in you know and it was just enough to go underneath the door and stick to the freshly painted epoxy the client called me two days later and she was terrified and uh, it was very difficult to kind of like clean the area and remove the flyer without making a visible damage to the floor um, it, it was a shame and it all happened because some pizza delivery guy did not realize the floor had been coated over. So always seal the doors, uh, seal any gaps underneath the doors, make sure no one can get onto the floor. Number seven, the PU, also known as polyurethane, moisture disaster. Now, in case you don't know, I've talked about this in previous videos and in previous articles, polyurethane is very, very sensitive to moisture. And here's an example of a floor I did where it was a bit of a cold day, a bit of a moist day. I hadn't realized though, it was one of those days when if I applied epoxy, it was borderline okay. I hadn't realized however, but if you apply polyurethane, it can be a bit of a problem. So basically it was a cold day, the moisture kind of settled on the polyurethane and you get all this kind of reaction. Uh, very, very important, never apply polyurethane in moist conditions. You want to have a dry, clean weather for polyurethane. Polyurethane is very sensitive to moisture and humidity. Now, number eight, the hot weather disaster. Here's another one of my uh, funny stories. Now, overall, please note, hot weather is good for epoxy. If I had to choose between hot weather and cold weather, I'll go with hot weather any day. Hot weather is awesome. It, the epoxy dries quickly. It's great. It's, uh, you don't get any like blushing. You don't get any humidity problems. I love hot weather. However, you can get problems. Also, check out this video we have on YouTube. You can uh, the link is posted above. Epoxy in hot weather, very good video to learn more about hot weather. And uh, here's a picture of my van that I no longer have because it broke down. A few uh, I, I, I've turned it in, but the reason I'm posting my van here is uh, there was this one project. It was a heat wave in Greece, and anyone who's been in Greece knows what a heat wave feels like if it's 40 degrees outside. So we've left all our uh, epoxy is in the van we're working inside at some point a worker goes to get some epoxy and goes inside but we haven't realized the epoxy is already very warm so we mix the a and the b component next minute we realize that it's the epoxy is curing in like 10 minutes or 15 minutes it's really hot we barely we didn't have any time to apply it properly and we're getting this massive like roller and i and sticky marks because we couldn't really apply it and I'm wondering what's going on I mean inside the temperature was 25 degrees it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be that in a 25 degree Celsius it shouldn't be that cold that warm for epoxy problem was outside we had a heat wave the epoxy had been in the van here's a van again all day it had gotten really warm and the minute we mixed the really warm epoxy with the hardener that thing started reacting straight away so never 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 keep you know always make sure that epoxy is kept in a cool and dry place 
Uh, never here, never ever have it in your van, especially if it's a really hot day outside. Make sure that it's cooled down before you start applying it. Number nine. Ah, uh, this is a great one. Well, it's not that great. I, I call it the extra B component problem. And the extra B component disaster is one day at the end of a we um, I'm, I'm unloading the van and I realize there's an extra B component. I'm like, whoa, that's a bit strange. Why do we have an extra B component here? So then I'm thinking, oh, maybe they put one extra B component to start with. Maybe they were, they'd counted them wrong. But part of me was like, could it be that we forgot to add in one bucket the B component? I was like, no, 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 that could never, ever happen. Well, the the next day I went to uh, check on the project and to see that it dried properly and to see that we could like remove the, the masking tapes and all that. And I don't actually have a picture of me stepping into the epoxy, luckily, but let me tell you, it was something like that. As I walked along a cured floor, I came across an area where it was sticky as if nothing had happened to it. As if and basically what happened was in that area, this was a self-leveling project to keep in mind. So we, we had like a two millimeter layer of epoxy. That area, we had never added the B component. So I stepped into a puddle of epoxy that had never cured properly. I don't even want to tell you how messy it was, how messy it was cleaning it up. I'm going to post a link here to the sticky epoxy video that you can, uh, you can check out and you can learn more about sticky epoxy. But it was really messy cleaning it up. It was really messy fixing the floor. It was really messy explaining to the client, trying to like not be fully uh, clean. What, what, you know, trying to tell the client, yeah, we had a bit of a problem here with the epoxy. We got We're gonna fix it. It was a real mess. Um, and it's funny that after all these years, these mistakes still happen. They're not just beginner mistakes. These mistakes still happen. I realized in the end it was bad communication between two workers. Um, and personally, I've put into place mechanisms so that sort of stuff doesn't happen again. But be careful because this is one of the worst things that can happen to unipoxy flooring. It's one of the messiest. It's one of the most horrible disasters. And watch the video on sticky epoxy. The link is uh, I posted before. Now, number 10. Uh, this is the last one. A little amusing story. It would be more amusing had it not cost me a bunch of money to uh, fix it. But... Um, I call it the flash rainstorm. So it's a nice day. We are finishing up the floor and we hear thunder outside. Oh, yeah, it's going to rain. Yeah, you think it's going to rain? Yeah, it's going to rain. Okay. So all of a sudden it starts to rain. We're like, no worries. And then we realize it's raining a lot. And then we realize whoever has built that new building that's not fully complete yet hasn't done a very good job with waterproofing the building, hasn't done a very good job with making sure the water is drained properly when it rains. And basically, this is what happened afterwards. All the rain came into a beautiful floor. I mean, look how beautiful, smooth this floor looks like. And then look at all these. These are watermarks. This is like water that got into the floor, then dried. And, you know, try fixing that floor now. It is a pain. We had to regrind that floor just to re be able to recode it. It was a real, real mess. Believe me. Um, so this is what I'm saying here is, when you when you're gonna you know when you're gonna leave the floor and the, your exit is outside of the is an outside building, make sure you have all plans in place. You know, be aware there could be dust, there could be rain, there could be mud, there could be something that could compromise your floor. Be be prepared for these things. I'm showing you this picture again because to this day it drives me nuts how this much water got into the floor because we weren't prepared for it. We did not prepare properly what we do if it rained. Um, be prepared. Just so you know, this was the final floor. So in the end, it actually looked okay. But, you know, what looks okay was, in the end, we had to recoat a large part of that floor. So those were those 10 disasters. I hope you learned something. If you enjoyed this presentation, please take a moment to like, share, or comment. Remember, you can join our course. Uh, the link is posted below. Join our course. Learn more about, you know, you can become an epoxy expert. Learn all the things you need to know to, like, put in epoxy floors, I'm getting lots of really good reviews and lots of happy people with this, um, with our course. Uh, remember, you can visit our website, ktesis.eu, for more info on our products and learncodings.com for uh, our articles on epoxy flooring. And that's also where you'll find access to our course. And I'm posting the link below. So thank you very much for watching. 
Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Take care.